Hello everybody. In this short video, I'm going to be explaining how to read dimensions on a drawing. Dimensions are the things that show the size and location of parts in a drawing. Okay, so this is how you tell what size the object is in the drawing that you're looking at. And if you had to recreate it, say in a CAD program like Onshape, you would be able to read the drawing know what size the part is, and then you would be able to recreate it as a CAD drawing in 3D, and then, you know, obviously you can send it to a 3D printer, have it printed, or you can print it out on paper and have the actual drawing in front of you. So, with that being said, I am going to explain how these work, okay? First of all, you know you have your dimension lines that are recognized by the arrows at each end okay and the measurement that's in the middle would indicate the dimension in this case it's using whole numbers and it's carrying the decimal four places over so this would be a four inch distance shown in this dimension line the line that extends off of the shape is called an extension line. That's not actually part of the shape, but it's just there to show you where the measurement starts and where the measurement ends. Okay, there will be situations where the measurement is in the middle of the dimension line, and there will also be situations like this one here that show the measurement just outside the dimension line with a little extension showing you where it belongs. The reason why they do that is if the dimension is too large to fit in a small area, they simply move it just outside the area. Okay, one more thing is if you have three sections to a drawing, and you'll notice here that they're giving you these two, which are one inch each, and they're not giving you the distance from here to here, showing you that third section. Reason being is because when you over-dimension a drawing, it can complicate the drawing and make it more difficult to understand. So the reason why they did not put that one-inch dimension here is because they are giving you the total distance from top to bottom of three inches. And by giving you these two here, you can simply add these two equaling two inches, subtract it from the total three, and that will indicate that this last section is also one inch. They do that in order to declutter the drawing. When you're dimensioning holes in an object, you'll see that this circle here has a, a dimension to it, and it's drawn differently because obviously it's a circle. You have this here, what's known as a leader line, going to the circle, showing you that it is one inch. But one inch what? Is it diameter? Is it radius? If you look at this little symbol right before the one, it is a circle with a line drawn diagonally through it. That is the mathematical symbol for diameter. So that tells you that the circle here is a one inch in diameter. That means that the radius would therefore be one half of an inch. Okay. Also, there are situations like this where they're showing you that the center point of this hole is exactly one inch from the edge of the object. And it's an exact one and a half inch distance from the bottom of the object. And that is how you would find that center point for your one inch diameter hole. As we look at this next example, you'll see that there are some dimensions that are written in red. That is because they are not supposed to be there. This is an example showing you over dimensioning. If you have the front view showing you the overall length of two inches, there is no reason to also place it in the top view because since the front is two inches, we automatically will know that the top is two inches. The object is not going to stretch or shrink when you go from the front view to the top view. You're simply looking from the front and then you're looking down from the top. The distance 
will not change when you do that. And they are also showing you an overdimensioning of the inch and a half distance and also the three quarters of an inch distance here. These are all not necessary because they're already shown here in the front view. What is important is in the top view to show the depth of the object because that is not able to be shown in the front. The one inch depth of this object can only be seen in the top view. As we look at the right side view, notice that the dimensions here are in red once again because they are not supposed to be there. This is an example to show you uh, the do's and don'ts of dimensioning. So you'll notice that the height of the shape is shown here, but it's already shown in the front view. That's why it's not necessary here. You'll notice that the depth of the shape is shown in the top view, and again, that's why it's not necessary to show it here in the right side view. So on this reading dimension activity, you'll notice that there's an isometric shape in the top right, in the top of the page here, and it's all labeled with letters. Okay, now those letters would indicate different distances. Those distances are now shown in the orthographic projection drawings on the bottom of the page. So you'll have the front view, the top view, and the right side view. And with just the information given in the drawing, we should be able to complete this table labeled A through T. So let's do the first letter together. Letter A is the dimension showing the full length of the object from left to right. So if we look down here at the front view, you will notice that this dimension is written here at four and three quarters of an inch. So you would take four and three quarters of an inch and place it next to the letter A. Let's do the next one. Letter B showing the depth of the object. In this case, the depth of the object would be shown here in the right side view as a two inch depth. So you would take two inches and place it here next to the letter B. Now I want to go over an example that's not so clear cut. That would be letter D. If you look at the distance of letter D, it would extend from this corner here to the outside edge here. That would be this distance illustrated by my red dot. Okay. If you look at the drawing, you'll notice that this is where D would reside. And there is no dimension for there, letter D. So we need to figure out what that distance would be. How do we figure that out? We take the total distance of four and three quarters, and we will add up all the other distances that go across. The distance of J, the distance of H, and the distance of F. And we would add those up and then subtract it from the total distance of four and three quarters. So in this situation, if we took four and three quarters of an inch and we subtracted it we subtract these three distances from it, we will end up with letter D. So let's do the whole inches first. We have one, two, three inches, plus three quarters, which would be three and three quarters, plus a quarter, which would equal four. So four and three quarters of an inch, which was A, and we subtract four inches from that, we'll end up with three quarters of an inch for letter D. And I would place that next to letter D, three quarters of an inch. So with the information given in this orthographic projection, you should be able to complete this table A through T, given the letters and the measurements. Good luck. I hope this helps.